again and welcome to Mance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. <sighs> Here we are, miserably cold. No, are not miserably well, cold. cold. It, you know, we're in our spring yeah. colors. Um, we're leading I refuse. I have the... my flip flops still on. You know, uh, okay. just gonna, you know, I refuse. Is, is that your Ooh. refusal my from, refuse. from, from, just, from how, I mean, I wear sneakers if we're I'm in the woods or something. But I just other can't. than that, done. No, I can't. No. I can't do shoes. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was thinking as I was leaving today, I'm like, yeah, if we get a sunny, warm day, everything's gonna go crazy green. Well, you that, know, it, it just needs that warm, like, poof. So there's, there's like two days where I can sit on my back enclosed porch and watch my lilacs just like open grow yeah not not even the flowers just, just the, the yeah. trees but because i'm i'm learning how to garden in new hampshire because uh you know i'm not from here yeah. and that's one of those things people don't think about no it's like if you grew up in one country like my grandma was super into plants yeah. and stuff she taught me everything about south african plants right but those but are you different move here and you're like what, what, what is what that is, <laughs> so weed should i yeah. be leaving it you know i'm very in the dandelion clover I'm well, <laughs> no the clover is great like I I, uh, we we overseeded our front lawn a couple two years ago, I think, um, to try to kill out the weeds without using pesticides. <laughs> and I would do it again. And then I also want to sod a section of my side yard because I don't want to. I I can't deal with the waiting for it to grow and the birds eat the seed and then I just yeah. I don't water it and then it's dead. So, but I did see the other day um, on Facebook Marketplace somebody was selling clover sod. So it's. it's grass but it's right. also clover and I was like oh so we did last year we actually seeded our entire front yeah. lawn with clover yeah. uh, we have a lot of dandelion currently yeah. coming out it's intentional yeah Connie. I leave them, <laughs> I leave the them for me I leave them for um, me but uh and, and our neighbor on the other side was like well didn't you cut a little oh, oh no it was Mark actually when he came to pick me up when we did the show while you were gone and he was like did you kind of let your lawn go to seed and I was like dude it no. was intentional right there's a difference <laughs> um clover yeah I let I try to do the don't don't mow until June I don't know it's looking pretty long I don't know if yeah. I'm gonna be able to wait till June I think everything's a little early um, Everything does seem to be early. I mean, I think it's also, it is, it, it, it was an El Nino year. Yep, it was a yep. mild winter. Yep. It's an early spring. It feels like it might be kind of wet, yep. but that's typical that's, no, for this I time of okay. year. No, I think it's okay. We don't have super mud or, yeah, you know, so. um, I am, um, I have, do have, you know, I go through and I rake all my, the hill beds and behind my house because leaves <laughs> and I leaf blow like crazy, you know, I'm out there and the day, and, um, I notice, like, you know, all the little hosta fingers start coming up, and there's a couple near my step, front, my deck steps, and I was, I looked at them yesterday, and I'm like, yeah, you grew a lot <laughs> since I was out here. The other, you know, they went from right. being these little nubs to all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I think I, I need have, to. Half my garden is actually yeah. flowering. I have, like, my tulips. I've yeah, I got my tulips. My living room they, it's and... funny, because I was counting, and I was like, okay, so we've got 14 tulips and one open, and then, like, the next day, I'm like, oh, now we got eight open. I have, so. uh. I have I should, all seven of mine that are open yeah. are in my dining room. Um, yeah, I thought about going out and just cutting them because I'm like, well, I'd probably appreciate them. Well, the them first more. few years I was like, no, let them be in the garden. How and natural and whatever. And then I was like, it's one, rainy. it's you don't see them. Two, my squirrels actually like them for some reason. They something maybe it's not the squirrels, but I think it is. Something eats them. Yeah, so, deer, deer will eat them. Well, I don't. If I, if I have a deer in my backyard, we are in trouble. Um, I did see a funny meme go by this week, which it was from PETA, the people who pretend mm. like they care about animals, <laughs> but really <laughs> are making a lot of money <laughs> euthanizing them. Anyway, they uh, they put on a meme that said, if you wouldn't eat a T-Rex, don't eat chickens, which is the joke, of course, about my backyard dinosaurs, yeah, but right? It's like, but I would eat it. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't know what they're going for here, You're but right, if man. that's the trade-off, I think we're all going to eat T-Rex. Yeah, that's right, that's right. right. Um, so tell me about Saturday at the park. Oh, it was great. So I'm on the board of, as is um, Carla's husband, Louis, on the board of the Friends of the Piscataqua River Park, and we're a two-year-old organization. I don't even think it's quite two years old yet. Um, that was started um, by Barbara Charette and her husband and some neighbors who abutted the property that goes along uh, the Piscataqua River Park. And we had our, we have an annual big cleanup in April. Um, this, so this is the second. Um, 
Just so you know. Piscata, and we can show yeah, the pretty Piscata picture. Club, Front River page Park. news on the union leader, um, which is nice when yeah. we actually get coverage yes. where it's like, look at all these so people many. doing yes. awesome things that are um, good for the community it, and good for the neighborhood. It's 112 acres. A lot of it is oh, woods. Is it, yeah, it is very, very wow. large. So there's natural, tra there's trails that go through them. And I mean, when I, w I don't feel like I haven't had a chance to actually walk, walk it other than when I'm there doing things for projects. Um, and I want to because I want to see the areas that got cleaned up and stuff. But um, I, I mean, I walk it regularly. Right. Every it does. It is cleaner. It is way cleaner. Way cleaner. I was actually out there yesterday, and I thought, wow, this is so great because because they did the cleanup. There, you know, the piles. So you guys yes. are doing taking out certain invasive species, yes, which is a nightmare, which but. is really hard. But yeah. once the, I know where the clearings yeah, are, you can and when see. you see it, and yes. you kind of so, see like the uh, because it's not that can, dense. Right now, you can see like there's regular growth, growth. Yeah. yeah so you'll notice if you're in our park or if you're other places where people are trying to get rid of invasive bittersweet you um you gap it you cut it uh, like a foot above the ground i think that's the rule and then you have to do like a three foot gap because it's so invasive that if you do it cut it like this it'll just grow back together mm. and they're like that's insane it's like uh, uh your tendon uh, you synapses in your then brain you have to put it in a pile and let it dry before you get rid of it. So like, it's this constant thing. And then we've got, um, and then uh, there was a, the tire pit. The tires. So shout out to my husband, yes. Louie, who apparently carried 76, that's what Dan said, tires out of the yeah. pit. And then he was pulling them out of and the, the mud. And the kids from St. A's were m removing and then the, them. Yeah, then the football guys from St. A's came and they were like, yeah, we'll just. And so Louie was like, some guy just came and he was like, Whoa, and it was just like beast mode. It was mode. just really, I mean, that was huge. I haven't seen where that was. I'm sure Dan will show it to me. Um, it's actually right by that uh, the bridge that goes behind the baseball fields. Yep. They've made a huge pile. So I assume it, the park's going to come yes. in with a truck or um, something. And, and then like the, a couple weeks ago, um, a whole bunch of people from Southern New Hampshire University came out and they scraped and painted the metal part of the bridge, which had They're already, thank I you, know. Gostown Goonies, have already Tagged. graffitied yeah. it. <laughs> and, um, Actually, I'm just making that up. I don't know if it was a Gostown <laughs> Goonies, but that but name then, amuses um, me. <laughs> Lauren, who's the president of Friends of Piscataqua River Park, and some kids and a couple other people were painting the wooden part. So, like, it just looks nicer. Well, the, here's also the thing. So, I don't know... Um, what it is, right? But it seems like maybe a couple of weeks before this cleanup, mm -hmm. I noticed, you know, they put up signs and like all these organizations yes. are collaborating. Yes. But I think there's also like an innate sense of like just a little bit of competition. Yeah, there is. There, I, right? that's, I don't disagree with Which you. Which competition, of course, fosters uh, faster things yes. to happen, whether you see it in the, the yeah. markets or with something like this. And so it's really actually nice to see because the other thing is that people are looking for things to do. Yeah. I think there are a lot of people who sense something is wrong, but yeah. they don't really know how or where or, or people, what to make it. And a they also with. aren't motivated to just do it on their own. It's an over, you know, like we always say, you know, pick up the trash in your neighborhood, which really is an easy thing. But for a lot of people, that's just way more motivate not even motivation it's just daunting it feels like you're not accomplishing things but when you come together with a group of 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever people and you see this mound of trash at the end of the day you feel like oh, i did wow, something right. and then you're a little bit more motivated to do it again yeah and and i mean i know we heart west has done just west side and litter endlessly. pickups where we go and and i would say we've had like 20 people show up yeah. and it's two hours on a saturday yeah. or a sunday and you just kind of cruise through the neighborhood this time of year when it's really, yeah. really kind of well, dirty. Well, it's hard the mel because melted. I notice I, I also try to be objective because I, I know I'm super critical of Manchester always looking like a bleh place. <laughs> um, and I see certain areas that always look clean. So I try to be conscious when I'm driving. Like if I'm coming down Dubuque Street and I look and I'm like, well, actually, you know, I'm not saying Dubuque Street in particular. If the sidewalk, if the street up to the curb is cleaned, I'm like, okay, I have to be conscious of the fact that there are some streets. Like Granite Street looks pretty clean right now. Um, but then there's other parts, obviously, that could be much better. But it's like, it's that grunge across along the edge that drives me nuts because it's, it just brings down the, the whole 
desire to clean up a, a block. So does the park have, uh, are you guys, is there another cleanup? Is there uh, there's always things going on. In? You can go to piscataquog.org. So that's P-I-S-C-A-T-A. Q-U-O-G dot org. That's the Friends of the Piscataqua River Park. Or you could Google Piscataqua River Park, Manchester, and it'll drive you to the the parks page, and there's information there. Um, and uh, if you're down at the river, my heron is back. Yeah, I saw, I saw the heron when I was talking to the reporter. I was like, oh, look, L there goes Louis the heron. said, yeah. he was like, oh, I think your bird's back. I and know the Audubon Society wants to do a bird walk through the park. Oh, that'd be pretty. And that'd we're planning nice. different things, you know. Everybody's got a life, so there's only so much. But we are working. We have plans to do a um, wildflower, like uh, what do you call it? Oh, like a um, seeding. But what do you call it? The bees. Uh, uh, pollination. Pollination. Pollinators garden. We have an area that we, that'll that probably really be. That really does make a difference. Yeah. And it's good. Know? It's good for the the pollinators, and it does look better than crappy. You know. Which is why, with the wildflowers too, you know, to Mark's point, it's not that I let it go to seed. You I just, just prefer yeah. that, like yeah. wildflowers. I mean, it attracts yeah. birds. And honestly, last year our wildflowers came up probably three weeks from now. Yeah. And they were there They're, through yeah. October because... Yeah, like, I have a pile of seeds that I keep buying over the years, and they might be spent, you know, right. they might not ever... And we took out some shrubs at the front of the driveway between us and our neighbor because they were all gangly, and they were, you know, the, the truck would hit them when they pull in their driveway. Mm. So I do want to, like, rake that up, put some loam down, and then just, like put all the seeds I've got squirreled away and whatever grows, grows. And it'll be just like be a little like, miracle garden. If it doesn't like, grow, it'll just be fewer things in my house. Be like, Tammy, uh, right. <laughs> that weed. <laughs> um, so uh, the reason I thought about the, the wildflowers is because I know on one of the NBC clips, I was actually yeah. struck. I was like, oh, wow, you know, those flowers actually last yeah. really long. So they do. I'm going to give a shout out for folks who have been following along with the NBC uh, series that was made that was NBC Boston. They did bring out the last two episodes that dropped last week. Uh, the episode 12, I believe, is the Crypto 6. So that this sort is of all covers um, re revolving around the Free State Project. Just yeah, and so no, I'm just saying if somebody and, happened and, to be wondering you know, what. It's, it's, I mean, it's called Life. Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of New Hampshire. So, and yeah. it's available both on YouTube and also on NBC Boston's website. So Episode 12, Crypto 6, it sort of covers that whole trial. They do talk to the DA and the AG and all of that. So that's sort of an interesting mm -hmm. perspective. And then the final one is sort of 20 years later. That tends to cover some of the drama, drama, drama. But also, I think, ends, I don't know if you've seen I it have yet, not. Uh, sort of ends on a hopeful, positive, hey, we're going into the next gen sort of vibe. So uh, for those of you who did watch the whole series, and if you haven't, and honestly, if you're a hater, you should watch it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that, that it was neat. Um, reminder that, let's see, today is Wednesday, the 1st of May. Happy ah. May. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, May 2nd, is the taco tour downtown. Um, I believe it's six to eight, $3 tacos, must use cash. Um, reminder that the roads close at noon and um, it don't park. Don't park on Elm Street between Granite and Bridge. Don't park on the little side streets between Elm and Chestnut. Um, you'll get towed and rightfully so because there's a major event going on down there tomorrow. Um, I also saw this. I got um, the Nixle alert, which I wish they would just put the words in the email. Can you, can you explain to me what Nixle is? What is it? I'm How assuming, do you get it? Um, if you go Why? To, you can go to, I know you can go to the city website. And again, somebody asked on Facebook the other day how to find the noise ordinance. And they were on the city website and they were using the search field and they couldn't find it. And I replied with the link because I looked. And I said, to be honest, I find it easier if you just Google or whatever search engine you're using, you know, Manchester, New Hampshire, noise ordinance, and it'll direct you usually to the web page that you need. The, the search on the city's website just never seems to bring up what I'm looking for. So um, you could probably Google Manchester NH, Nixl, N-I-X-L, I think it's N-I-X-L, um, alert, and I bet it will bring you to 
where you can sign up and it's a whole list of things. Like you can sign up for snow emergencies and you can sign up for this so that you can get the information. And is it a text message it's, you receive? Um, I or? get it via email. I don't okay. know, it might have a text option. Um, and then it, when you get it, it, it doesn't tell you, it just gives you the headline. So that's a little pain in the butt, but it's still. Um, and this, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this sort of originated because they encrypted the police scanners nah, or Nixle, no? Nixle, I think, was before that. Was it? Um, it just wasn't as common, you know, just like everything, you start something and only a few people. But I feel like I've had the alerts for a long time. I mean, I, it's certainly been at least 10 years that it's existed, yeah, it's, I want to say. It's, it, and it's handy. It's probably been almost 10 years you know, since the, actually, the West Side lockdown was 2016. Geez, that's crazy, so. right? <laughs> um, so, you know, if you want to know about, there's, like I said, there's endless options you can take, because if you have kids in school, you might want to know about school closures. Right. I don't need to get alerted about school closures. But um, really realizing this is happening now, um, April 29th, which would have been two days ago, through May 3rd, which is Friday. So still, if you're watching this on Facebook or watching the show before Friday, um, there is work being done on the Riverwalk from Queen City mm -hmm. to Hands Across America Bridge. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, now we know what the bridge's name is. <laughs> oh, you didn't know that? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, it's the Hands Across America Bridge. I knew that. The, the foot, the, the, the foot bridge, the walking bridge is the Hands Across America Bridge. Mm -hmm. Hands Across the Merrimack Bridge. Um, because they raised money, that was the group that raised the money to do it years ago. Okay. Like, talk about a long time ago. Right. It's got, I mean. And it, it was, um, it was named for Emil Bulio. Someone, Hunt, I want to say, is the big bull at the end of the one side of the bridge yeah, with a name. Um, but. but they were doing, they're doing work down there. It says, includes excavation, preparation, and installation of new pavement and loam and seeding the area. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, paving will be formed on the 30th, which is yesterday. It'll be, the river walk would be closed. Um, for paving. So anyways, if, t you know, if you happen to be, if you think you're going to come up from Queen City on the river walk to go to Taco to tomorrow night, you probably aren't. Um, <laughs> so there is things. It does seem like there's a lot of things. I mean, it's typical spring. I see paving going on in different spots. I was up at um, the Hill, which is at McIntyre yesterday, uh, scheduling a fundraiser for Victoria Sullivan. And I noticed they're doing a lot of paving right there. Uh, and I guess that's Smith Road. Seems like that whole road, because I've been over the the primary, they were having a lot of yeah. events up there, and it was almost impossible to get well, to McIntyre, because it was almost like... Constant. You know, constantly. Yeah. And, well, I, I think they're moving water pipes Well, I was going to say, something. I'm not really sure where the Christian Brooks sewer project actually is, <laughs> but I get emails about that constantly in the update, because that, I guess, is a major project that's been going on for, you know, like right. two years now. Um, so that might have something to do with, you know, they're replacing the sewer drains. So uh, I watched a really good documentary last night about the gut biome, which I would recommend yes. on, on Netflix because your sewage yes. statement reminded me about their... We have uh, our own know, sewage system. It's, it, well, it's all about the poop, right, with your microbiome. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's well worth watching because the science is now starting to get there where people are starting to understand that there is actually this mind-gut connection. Yep. And that, you know, whatever is happening in your biome really has a massive impact both on your health, but also on your mental health. And so, uh, I mean, we were laughing because years ago, I mean, I think it was before Simpsons even predicted it, you know, I've always had issues. And Louis was like, I should give you a poop transfer, right? And I was like, no, <laughs> right? But now it's actually the thing du jour, so much so that they can do a transfer because they, because they, sequence the genome, Yes, they can now look at the bacteria, right? Yes. And they can isolate and identify the different kinds of bacteria. So they know that there are certain things that actually make you depressed. Yes. And some people, and certain that make you obese. Yeah. And that well, certain um, obese people don't have the one that will make yes. you skinny. So one of the people in the movie is this woman who's like, I've been dieting my whole life and it doesn't work. Yep. And then they did the transplant and now she's barely yeah, I, on her way. We were listening to a podcast about a very similar subject matter, and I'll come back to it in a second. But, um, and they were talking about uh, the way our, you know, they, they can't really understand it all because it's hard it's it's science you know but um they were saying um, that people lose people who once you've gained weight so say you're you know at uh your body is naturally wants an 18 percent body fat like your one person's body but then they gain weight and they are up at a 30 percent body weight you know body fat 
now their body doesn't want that 18 anymore. Now it thinks it should be up here, so it doesn't want to lose weight because it doesn't think it's supposed to. It thinks this is where I need to be. And it makes it so that the more people, the heavier people are, the harder it is for them to lose weight, which is frustrating besides the depression issue, but it's frustrating because you could lose weight when you didn't really need to lose weight, but when you do need to lose weight, it's really hard. So that bringing that back, so Dan and I, and this is our week two, I don't know if, you, if I've even told you this. So we started a, a GLP-1 inhibitor okay. program, which is, uh, it's not Ozempic, but it's along that line. Um, it'll be interesting. I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Um, is it a medicine or? It is an injection. Okay. It is a drug. It, um, and it's a, it's a inhibitor. So what it basically does, for the lack of better explanation, is it tells um, the receptor that tells you you're hungry that you're not. So, or it tells you sooner. So nor, and I do think there is a- So it, that's sort of like now Trexone, which is a drug that no one seems to know about. It's actually over the counter. It's the biggest secret in the yeah. history of mankind. Uh, which will m make you not want to drink yeah, it's alcohol a, it's the same after concept. There's, two drinks. The, uh, the, 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 the nurse well, practitioner the that we not on went, that. I don't know. Well, right. oh, maybe well, because Big Harma can't make money out of it. We were <laughs> listening to them and this guy talk, and he was talking about like McDonald's and fast food and all this stuff. And I just kind of chuckled, and I looked over at Dan, and I go, wait a minute. So the FDA doesn't want, because there's like 70 versions of Ozempic in the FDA process right now, because... This might end up being like one of those things that like, oh, everybody needs vitamin D because we've become an obese creature and it's hard to ratchet that back. But, you know, you look at the food things that they put in foods, which are far worse than whether this drug may or may not cause constipation. Do you know what I mean? Like, wait a minute, but you don't worry about what we're putting in that stuff that you're calling food. <laughs> So it is an interesting, it, it is interesting. Um, I have some friends that are on either Ozempic or Wagovi. There's, what we're doing is um, a compounded version because insurance doesn't cover it unless you're obese. So insurance would rather everybody be diabetic and then <laughs> treat you. Whoa. Instead of just saying, hey, how about trying this so that you don't become a diet? I mean, come on, it's just backwards stupid. It's not health care. It's not human care. It is a medical profession it's... corporation thing that is somehow attached to our health care. Yeah, I mean, that whole market, everyone knows and I mean, where I Don't get me wrong. There could be that. side effects to this that will make me just say, no, this isn't worth it, you know? Um and if I hear that there's something terrible, like there's some the guy was talking and he, uh, on the podcast, and he goes, "There are very, the testing. They have to tell you all the worst things. There is <laughs> oh, no, they don't. Well, I mean, you they know, can you, just redact it when you hear the commercial. You know, for well, something to stop, you know, di diarrhea, and they say, you know, can cause you know, like spontaneous something, and you're like, okay, that one person <laughs> that happened to. So they talk about depression or suicidal tendencies or whatever, and I'm like, I think that might be. That's probably more indicative of a certain um, genetic makeup of somebody that they're probably predisposed to. The, so you just have to be aware of just like everything else. If you're going to take, you know, vitamin supplements, you have to be aware of that even vitamin. I mean, you can die from vitamin overdose, too. But that doesn't mean you, should, you stop taking vitamins, you know. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes over, you know, the course of time. It's easy. It's, it's not cheap, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, I have thoughts, but I will keep them I know. to myself. No, I, mean, I, I, I realize that, and I'm not, you know, like I'm not convinced always on it. But this is this is the path we decided to take, and we'll see where it goes and how it goes, and it'll be interesting firsthand to be able to know. Right. I mean, one of the things in this um, in this uh, biome documentary, the gut uh, that they were talking about is how you know you actually have to think about, about most of these changes not as sort of a diet, right, right. Or a thing. It's got to be that lifestyle it's change. It's got to be a lifestyle change. So I would at least consider, you know, if one's on medication, uh, you know, and you lose the weight, there's got to be like a plan afterwards. Yes, I or know. are you on it like well, forever? Think, uh, so, and then, well, like, what is that so, impact? Uh, that is like and, my biggest thought. Like, I think differently than sometimes the other. Some people will go on this medication and they will stay on it forever because that's just the only way they're going to be able to do it. I'm looking at it this way because it is rather bizarre to feel this way. You know, normally you sit down and you order a dinner at Fratello's. You're having this great pasta dinner. 
I think I ate like four bites of it. And it's either in my head already that I'm not gonna eat, eat so much, or it is actually the drug telling me that I'm not gonna eat so much. And then you just don't. So I'm like, okay, so say you do this for two years and you condition yourself that you no longer need the whole burger and the whole fries at lunch. So one of the guys in the documentary was a professional hot dog eater. He was a oh. Japanese gentleman. And he was in the program because he did not have the ability to feel satiated anymore. It, uh, he had eaten, he was, he, like he was he still would, number right. one at 40 years old or whatever. And you can't, and, your body can't say, well, just right now. So, and also like literally hot dogs, right? So it's right. like, oh my God, what is his biome? It's just had like the worst food for like, you know, 30 years or whatever. Um, so they, they put him in an MRI, right, to do brain scans. And one of the MRIs would be a loop of, of photos of food, right? Yeah. So it's interesting because when I quit drinking, I noticed one of the initial things was it's if like, you oh, look a at that. Ooh, look at that. Or a, something, someone yeah. in a bar, like you would actually start salivating, right? Like you're, and then after a while that, that, that stopped, wears. right? That sort of Pelovian response. And now, actually, I said to Louis last night, I was watching a movie and I actually realized like halfway through the scene, I was like, oh, they're at a bar. Like I didn't, didn't even know it was it was setting. just background. It was just, yeah, it was just like whatever, right? So this guy's MRI had his brain uniquely had, it was firing like literal red in every region of the brain when he saw food. that has anything to do with appetite, food, self-control, whatever. So the other people's brains would have, would light up with something, right? Like it would light up on the mac and cheese yeah, or whatever. Right, right. But his actually activated all the different parts of his brain. So they were positing that's because he had to like mentally train himself to like not have a gag reflex, yeah, like yeah. just to be able to like just to be able to do it. I mean, it's so gross, right? Um, so he really has to almost like rewire right. his brain, right? Which is part of cognitive yep. behavioral therapy, it's part of like how people can yep. heal themselves, yep. right? So I'm a big proponent if there's pharma that's like what? not gonna make you right. sicker that's what I, that's, and yeah. has a solution yes. that maybe puts you on the track. Yes, yeah. so that you can retrain your brain, brain so that you're not eating this much food because that's how you, I mean, we're, you think about it, a lot of people, myself well, it's included. it's also something like a plate of pasta. I mean, I know you don't wanna hear it, but it is literally glucose on a plate, and so you're, right. it's like you sugar, ate, it's exactly. like addiction. If you were to eat, it's like eating a cake. Exactly, just like a loaf of bread or whatever. Like, But to have a couple mouth, uh, forks of it is tolerable. Right. So if I, you know, like, we'll see. It'll be interesting. We will see. We will be back again next week. It'll this be glorious and, and nice and warm, I hope, because I'm going camping a week from this weekend, so it better get warm soon. Um, if you guys have any feedback, of course, get in touch. Manch, uh, talk at gmail.com. Yep, you got it. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Take Bye. care. Bye.